once upon a time in a small kingdom of tiny cottages, babbling brooks, and rolling hills lived a little witch, a middle-sized wolf, an absolutely enormous giant. His awesome footsteps echoed like thunder throughout the land. People don't them. How will the little tailor outwit the giant? Find out in this story of wolves, witches, and giants called the Little Tailor. Once upon a time, there was a little tailor who not only made excellent jackets for the inhabitants of the town, but wonderful clothes for the king. The king, who was very fashion conscious and was forever summoning his little tailor for fittings at the palace. Even the most outrageous new fashion was okay by the king. The little tailor was always keen to visit the palace because the king had a beautiful daughter. You're wasting your time here, said the king. I'm hardly likely to let her marry a tailor, however skilled he is. Especially if he's little and weedy, moaned the tailor to himself. One day, the tailor was at work in his shop, cutting out a new shell suit for the king when an old lady came down the lane. Jam! For sale! The tailor was very keen on jam and insisted on trying a spoonful from every jar. The old lady was very cross with him and would certainly have put a curse on him if she had been a witch. However, eventually the tailor chose a pot and paid the woman and spread himself a thick slice of bread and jam. Laying the slice aside to cut some flares for the king, he was annoyed to see a number of flies tucking into his snack. Picking up the nearest piece of cloth, he swatted the flies with a mighty swat. Heavens above, I've killed several flies in one blow. The whole world shall know of this and he went straight to the palace to proclaim his strength to the king. Seven in one blow, mocked the king as he tried on his gigantic flares and jam-covered silk shirt. It's true, went on the tailor, and now I've proved my strength, you might allow me to marry your daughter. The king was in truth beginning to tire of the little tailor, he decided to test his strength once and for all. Do you know the giant who lives behind the mountain? Asked the king. Well, not personally, but I did make him a pair of trousers once. Seven abandoned woolen mills needed to be reopened to make the cloths required. We shall arrange a contest. If you prove stronger than the giant, then you shall have my daughter's hand in marriage, plus any other bits you require. The tailor dashed home to get ready for the journey to the mountain, a little worried as to where his boastful embroidery was leading. Oh, well, he can only kill me, he mused as he popped a big ripe orange and a ball of wool into his pocket. Soon the king, his army of foot soldiers, and the little tailor arrived at the giant's mountain. The giant, apart from being immensely strong, was also immensely thick. Here, tailor, when are you going to mend the button on my trousers? Uh, when I find one the size of a dinner plate, said the tailor, bemoaning his complaining customers. We have not come here to talk about fly buttons. We are here to see if this little tailor can match your strength. 
said the king. All right, let's see if he can squeeze water out of a stone. The giant picked up a stone and squeezed it until water dripped out through his clenched fingers. There were gasps of amazement and advance order for underpants from the soldiers. Easy, said the tailor. He bent down to pick up a stone that actually had the ripe orange in his hand and he squeezed the juice and it poured through his fingers. More gas, more underpants. Okay, let's see how far you can throw a stone. And he hurled one a very respectable distance. Easy again, said the tailor, picking up the ball of grey wool out of his pocket and lobbing it effortlessly into the next field. A word in your ear, giant, said the frustrated king as the giant stooped down to listen. I shall send the tailor back for one last test, but this time ask that stupid twin brother of yours to be with you. When they returned to the palace, the king summoned the tailor. Since you boast that you have killed seven, at one blow, the prospect of taking on two giants at once should cause you no problem, I imagine. None whatsoever. Very well then, beat the two giants and you shall marry my daughter. The tailor set off with the soldiers following at a safe distance, more terrified of the tailor than the two giants. You are here, hog all hell, and deal with the giants. Quietly he crept ahead to where he found the two giants asleep under a tree in the afternoon sun. Stealthily he climbed the tree and dropped a pebble on the first giant below. Oh, what are you hitting me for? You must have been dreaming. Taylor then threw a stone down on the second giant. Oh, hey, oh, I never touched you. Yes, you did. You hate me because I borrowed your walk giant the other day. Oh, 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 ah, said the giant as he lashed out at his brother in a massive feast of biffing, butting, and nutting. After the dust was cleared, there lay two groaning, battered giants. The tailor summoned the soldiers who saw the prostrate giants and dashed back to the palace to tell the king, Give him your daughter, give him your palace, and give him what he wants, begged the commander, to which the king happily agreed. No thanks, said the honest tailor, knowing his seven-in-one blow escapade would be found out sooner or later. He did, however, gain an order for 6,000 new pairs of underpants for the soldiers.